how cool is this? Finally, a way to make a two-way light switch smart without even replacing the switches. Hi guys, they were taking a look at the Sonoff Dual R3. It's a dual relay Wi-Fi smart switch with power metering and it can be used to control automated blinds or even help you control a two-way lighting circuit. So I'm going to show you how to get it set up, the options you get in there, and we'll try to set up a two-way lighting circuit. In the packaging, you get an instruction manual, which is multi-language and a quality control card. The switch itself is very nice and compact. Dimensions wise, it comes in at 5.3 centimeters wide, 4.8 centimeters tall, and 2.4 centimeters deep. It's got a mount on there, so they say it can go on a DIN rail. And just to show on the other side, there's nothing there. On the mount itself, there's two screw hole points, all plasticky build, you can see for yourself not too bad. Looking at the top, you've got a button here as a reset and looking all the way around, there's nothing else other than the connection points at the top and the bottom there. I'll show a circuit diagram, give you an idea how to get this wired up. There's loads of info on this on the web as well. But what we're initially gonna do, we're just gonna get this powered up, get it added in, see the options available, and we'll try to create a two-way lighting circuit with it. Let's begin with wiring up the switch. So you've got a neutral connection there. So that's one thing to be aware of. You will need a neutral wire going into this. And then you've got your inputs just over here. Looking at some diagrams, I can see the live connection will go in there and a neutral into there. And I've got a three pin plug with a cable at the other end. I'm just gonna wire directly into here. Let's make a start at setting this up. So coming over to my Android phone, the app you're after is eWe Link. I've already got it installed. If you haven't, obviously install it. You'll be asked to sign up. Sign up with an account. And now if I start it up, so this is what you're initially presented with. So to get this set up, let's click the plus. Bluetooth pairing, just need to turn on Bluetooth. And now let's turn on the device next to that. And there you go, it's picked it up. So let me select that. Need to just select my Wi-Fi, enter in my password and save to that. And there you go, it's added in as quick as that. Done to this, and it's added in. So now if I select it, so you've got three different working modes. At the moment it's on motor, but I'm gonna switch that over just to switch. External trigger mode, going on to there, channel one or two, select channel one, and there are the different trigger modes. So pulse mode, edge mode, and following mode. We're gonna to stick to edge mode because that's what we're gonna be using later on. So this is connect to latching switch, SPDT switch, commonly used in dual control light switch. I just click save and there we have it, two buttons on here. Clicking it gives a slight vibration and obviously the color here changes. You don't see anything on the device because I haven't connected anything up to it yet. I'll briefly show the options on here. So looking in settings, got working mode going into there. You can change the working mode on here. So if I go to motor, got motor settings, external switch type, you can set it there, back from there and then meter, so it can just be used as a meter to collect data, but it can't be controlled. Let's see what it looks like after you save it in these modes. Okay, so it's just a meter reading, voltage and consumption on here. Now back from there, looking in motor, and that's what you see for the motor. So interesting, you've got three different possibilities with this. Let's flip it back to just being a switch. Looking in OPS, channel one, you can set parameters on here. So you can have a minimum power, maximum power, minimum voltage, maximum voltage, and max current. So this is quite interesting, they've got this. So if any of these conditions are met, the device will just shut off, and that's to protect the device. Back from there, then looking in push notifications, obviously you can turn on push notifications for this. You've got a log as well, so you can see when it was triggered, and device information there, together with delete at the bottom. Back from here, consumption. You can see the consumption on here for each switch. Schedule, timers, so you can set standard things on here, so timers to turn it on and off, and then a timer, so you can have a timer going, so after a certain amount of time, it just turns on or turns off. Loop timer, so you can set up a loop timer to get it repeating an action. Back from here, and that's it, that's all the options available. So next, looking at the circuit diagram, I'm gonna try and replicate, it's this one here, and you can see where the neutral and live, I've connected that at the moment, so the next things to connect up are the two switches and the light bulb on this. So I'll set that up in the background and demonstrate the functionality afterwards. 
Now, looking at a wiring diagram, how a two-way light switch would be set up in the UK, you can see the wiring in there with the switches on the left-hand side, seeding rows is on the right-hand side, and you can see how the wiring all comes together. Now, if we move across to how it should be wired up in the ceiling, you can see there, you've got the live and neutral coming in from the ceiling rows into the Sonoff switch. Then you can see the lamp wired up as well and then the two wires you're going to need going back to the switches so that seems to be the most logical way to get this wired up okay so i've done the wiring as per the diagram i've just showed and this will confirm if the two-way lighting will work there you go so this is a situation where it's a hallway light one switch is downstairs and the other one is on the first floor for example and you can just alternate between turning it on and off so there's never actually been a solution to resolve this in a smart way. So you don't get any two-way lighting switches, for example, or any sort of other smart switches that allow you to continue using the two-way switches, but have it smart as well. So now coming over to the app, if I press the button here, there you go, turns it on, turns it off. So you can remotely control this. You can set timers on this as well. It works with the Google side of things and Amazon side of things for voice control. So you just link into their services and skills and that will work. And you can see for yourself, power it off, power it on. So there you go. How cool is that? Really impressed by the switch, the fact that's finally achievable. And again, because it's got two additional connections on there, you could have it in a situation where it's used for two different floors. So if you had a ground floor, two-way switch would work for that. And on the first floor, if you had another light, it could work for that as well. So there you go, simple as that. Just need to be careful, obviously, with electrics. If you're working with it, if you're not sure, don't even attempt it. Call in an electrician and get them to do it. But with basic DIY skills, you can work out where the placement of this should go. So like I said, it does require a neutral connection. So you'd put it more in the ceiling rows and that's the point where the light is, so you probably have a neutral and live connection there. All the functionality is available via the app. So if I now go to schedule, I can set a timer for it to come on, for instance. I can set timers now for it to shut off after a certain period and even do the loop timer. Clicking on consumption, channel one, and you can see there, and if I now turn it on, there you go. You can see how much power is being used at that moment in time. And the graph below gives you your daily consumption on this. And if I click on real time, start on that, and there we stop. Not sure what that's given. I would have thought it'd give a kilowatt reading on there per hour. I guess you just got to leave it running longer. But now going back to history record, you can see the current output on here. Now if I turn it off, it goes to zero. So impressive bit of functionality. I like the fact it's not just for light switches. You can use it for a blind motor as well. You can control your motorized blinds or you can use, use it just to monitor energy consumption. Now coming in close on the switch, you can see some light indicators. So the first one down here is for Wi-Fi connectivity. And if that's blue, you know you've got connectivity there. And then you've got two additional ones above that and that's for each of the switches. Now if I turn the switch on, there you go. Lights change to red on here. If I press the next one, there you go. Second one's turned on. So it gives a visual indicator. If I press the button on the light switch, turn it off, and then that light goes on. So that's your indicator whether the switch is on or not. So there you go, I hope it's helped anyone thinking of purchasing this. Really impressed by the fact we've finally got a solution for a two-way smart light switch. Details for the product, including purchasing links, are in the description below. Hang around for the end cards. There'll be a playlist with more smart tech videos. Thanks for viewing, and see you in the next one.